Hello friends, it's Julie from Pages and Pens. Welcome back to my channel and to a reading vlog. Let's jump right into it. First of all, excuse any noise, I've got my windows open and I live in an apartment complex and there's air conditioners and stuff on and, and whatnot. So today I wanted to start a reading vlog that is probably going to take quite a while to do because author life. I did want to start it. I have so many books up on my shelves that have been there for so long that I have not gotten to. So I decided to take five of my YA fantasy, bring them down. I'm going to look at Goodreads. I'm going to see what their average ratings are. I'm going to look at maybe like one of the top reviews. And then I'm going to read a f chapter or two and then come back and report. So first, let me tell you what my books are. First up is this beautiful edition. I think this is Alcrate. Yeah, it is. Um, of Bone Crier's Moon. Uh, am I interested? Yes. Do I still have, oh, I have everything on the inside of this bad boy. Do I know anything about it? Absolutely not. Do I know that it's YA fantasy? Yes. So currently on Goodreads, this is a book one. Uh, it's sitting at a 3.69 on quite a few ratings, over 20,000. Madison is the first one that comes up for me and she gave it five stars. If you're a fan of hate to love romances, you'll adore the romance between these two. Main character is snarky, badass, and vulnerable. I love that combination. They're each other's match in every conceivable way. She has so much promise and power. I was constantly rolling my eyes at Jules. That is hurtful. She was an unlikable character. So I mean, I'm gonna try all the chapters anyway, but that's book one. And then book two, I have a weird vain idea that I'm going to keep this regardless because it's so pretty, but it is Mermaid Moon. We got a moon theme going on. Uh, Mermaid Moon by Susanna Cockle and Bone Criers is Catherine uh, Purdy. But this book is, first of all, it's square. Like it has a square spine, which is weird. Like it's very square, but a beautiful, beautiful hardcover that I adore. And these gorgeous teal sprayed pages. So I have a feeling I'm going to want it regardless. And I know that this has to do with like deadly mermaids. This is sitting at whew, um, 619 ratings and it's a 3.37. I do have a couple friends that read this. Uh, the first friend, friends and following 70 people have read it that I know. Um, a one star is the first one that comes up though. And then a two star and a four star. Similar story to The Little Mermaid, though more sinister. All looks no personality. Oh no. Unfortunately, I did not like this one. I'm not the target reader. The plot is borderline middle grade. Took too, it was too long, skimmed a lot because I just wanted to finish it for a live show. A lot of the people that I know that read this gave it two or three or one star or DNF'd. So it's not promising. Will I keep it because it's pretty? Maybe. Bone Witch. We're getting all the like word association here. This one I know is loved and I for some reason have not picked it up. This is one of the covers that I actually gave my cover designers as like inspiration because I love the scroll work around it. Uh, Rin Chepeco, it this is a very popular series. Almost 30,000 reviews, no 30,000 ratings and it's a 3.71. Story of Scorned Witches, Sinister Curses and Resurrection. It's the start of a trilogy which I know is finished at this point so there's that. The also enjoyed are books that I've read. Ace of Shades and Timekeeper. I read those. So that's good. Friends and Following, a lot of five stars. Like the first multiple of my friends are all five stars. Magic, world building, necromancy, magic apprentice, Middle Eastern influenced fantasy, lyrical and descriptive. Ooh, those are some of my favorite words. Okay, I'm very excited about this. I like I knew I was going to be, so I'm not surprised. But I think I'm gonna give them like a two chapter try. Serpent and Dove is currently sitting at a 4.03 and this is by Shelby Maherin. Um, and I believe it's a witch hunter and a witch and they fall for each other. It is magic fiction, fantasy, romance, young adult, but I think verging on new adult because I think there's like on page sexy time, maybe. People that I follow the first five, six, seven are all five stars, one DNF. And then we have Cryer's War. Um, and this one is by Nina Varea, Varela, Varela. I feel like it's probably pronounced with a Y and I'm an asshole for not knowing. 
uh, one mortal, one made, one one loved, one betrayed. I think this is queer. Is this queer? I don't know. It's a beautiful poem of a book that touches meaningfully on complex themes of forbidden romance, political subterfuge, and exactly what it means to be human. For sci-fi fantasy lovers, I'm a fan of all of that. And also anything, anything like lyrically or beautifully written, I'm always a fan for. And this one is at a 4.16 on almost 28,000 reviews. Um, and everybody that I know rated it between three, four, five stars, mostly threes and fours for people that I know. That's the five, right? Bone Crier's Moon, Mermaid Moon, The Bone Witch, Crier's War, Serpent and Dove. I'm going to take as much time as is necessary to read the first one, two, maybe three chapters, depending on how long they are. And then, and then I'll report back and let you know my thoughts. I don't think it's all going to be done today. One or two of them might get done today. If these are TBR books, but I'm not going to enjoy them, then I'm probably not going to keep them on my shelves. I just have very limited space. So uh, let's see what stays, what goes. I'm not in a YA fantasy mood right now. Like I don't want to read them right now in terms of like, even if I enjoy them, I don't think I'll pick one up immediately, but I could be wrong. Like I could get sucked in and I could want to read them right now. I think I'm going to start with Bone Crier's Moon and I'll be back and let you know what I think. But I did finish the first three chapters of Bone Crier's Moon, which included um, a prequel like chapter and then the first two POVs, but we do have three. So we do get um, another one. I, I considered reading another chapter, but I don't think I need to because I'm interested. I'm intrigued. That different from other things that I've read, especially um, Kendara Blake's series, because it's very much like kill a thing, get its powers. And it's a very like female driven society, which also. But I'm curious enough to be able to finish this book and it is pretty and it is signed. I'm going to put this one back up on my shelf and keep it, which means I'm going from Bone Crier's Moon to Mermaid Moon. Oh god, I hope it doesn't suck. Okay, so from prologue to chapter four is 24 pages, so I'm pretty sure I can read 24 pages. All right, babes, um, I finished my pages of Mermaid Moon. I actually went a chapter further because it was only a couple pages. The chapters are really short. Probably not interested in reading this. Gonna be honest. And it has nothing to do with the writing and or the like quality of work. Obviously it's a beautiful book, um, but there's a lot of Jesus stuff, a lot of Bible stuff, a lot of religious stuff already. And I'm not here for that. I don't think that's for me. Also, it is very much giving me Little Mermaid vibes, and yes, probably a little bit more lethal, but that's not my jam. It's not my jam, but I am keeping it. So that doesn't help me actually get rid of any shelf space. And I was afraid that was going to be the case. Um, I may pick it up at some point in the future. Who knows? But now is not that time. The next book on my list is The Bone Witch. Let's see where pages leave me off. So chapter three starts on page 21. Let's plan for 30 on The Bone Witch, which I anticipate liking. I really hope I like this. Okay, I'm gonna put a tab in for where I wanna stop and I will check back in when I have The Bone Witch to go with. Here with the shocker of the vlog because <laughs> I don't like, I don't think I like this book. I am 30 pages in and I gotta tell you I skimmed a lot of those 30 pages. I don't I don't know there's something about the writing style that's not connecting with me. It's not that it's not interesting but I am not interested. But I've had this for far too long to have not picked it up and then to be 30 pages in and skimming already. So this is gonna be the first book that leaves my shelf. Did not see that coming. Um, I also looked up on my shelf and I have a couple other YA fantasy that I might end up pulling down and adding into this. I'm watching Sprints with Steve and Great Friends. <laughs> Serpent and Dove next. Let's see how this one goes. And then I'm gonna pull down a couple others. We'll go over those two. I also pulled down Unhooked by Lisa Maxwell because I'm a sucker for anything Peter Pan retelling. 
um, like a sucker for it. Like I'm probably going to love it even if it's garbage. This has a 3.55 on Goodreads and looking down at like my friends reviews, we have a three star, a DNF, a two star, a three star, <clears throat> a DNF, a four star. Allie from Hardback Quarter gave it four stars. Well, up in the air, not really sure about this one, but I'm going to add it into the mix. And then one that I've, I've put this into an unhaul three times, I think, and then pulled it back out each time because it's beautiful. And because I actually really like Mary's writing. I liked her Remnant Chronicle series. Um, I had some like issues with character work, but in general, I really like her writing style. So I picked this up. I have the sequel too. They're gorgeous hardcovers. Like they're beautiful books. We're going to give this a try. I'm, I haven't even opened it to look at it, honestly, to like even attempt it, but it's sitting at a 4.22 at just about 70,000 ratings. And in terms of my friend groups, we've got a five star, five star, a five star, a four star, a four star, a four star, a five star, a four star. This came out in 2018 and I pre-ordered it. Like I'm pretty sure I pre-ordered this. So I've been sitting on it for like four years. So I need to figure that out. So I'm going to add in these two books, Unhooked and Dance of Thieves. But right now I am going to get into Serpent and Dove. There's a chapter at page 29. So I will give it till that. You guys are so lucky you just get all of these clips of me in bed just kind of checking in with you all in one day. Uh, at least for now. Serpent and Dove, I am on page 28. I have gotten for, through the first two chapters. I'm interested to read the next POV, but I'm sticking with it. It's given me Six of Crows vibes meets like from Blood and Ash. I don't know. I'm here for it. I'm really struggling right now with Mermaid Moon because I am not interested in it, but it's so pretty, but I don't really, I mean, I've gotten rid of prettier books, I'm sure. I'm also kind of like not telling you what anything is about, which is shitty of me, but The Bone Witch is literally about a, a woman, a girl, who has like a necromancy skill, brings her brother back from the dead, doesn't mean to, and everybody has different magics. We've got water magic and earth magic and forest magic and all that kind of stuff. Um, and hers is like the forbidden necromancy one. I also have Gideon the Ninth and Harrow the Ninth, right? As arcs up on my shelves. I'm not even bringing those down. I tried to read Gideon and DNF'd it or soft DNF'd it. And I still have interest in those. And I know that those are like necromancer ones too. I'm just, I don't know. It is what it is. So that one's still going to go. This one we've got, um, witches and people that hunt witches and it's very much like women are not safe so we dress as men and like courtesans and like a brothel and I'm here for that. It is time to get into Crier's War by Nina Varela, 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 right? Uh, this is, it's so freaking beautiful. It's so hard to get you to like actually be able to see it, but I feel like I'm gonna like it. It's said to have that really pretty writing and I think it's gonna be one that I end up really enjoying. I'm gonna go make lunch and then I'm gonna come back and I'm going to read this. Um, let's see where chapters leave off and how many pages I'm gonna be reading. Chapter two starts on page 20. Chapter three doesn't start until 37. So I'm only gonna read till chapter two. We'll see how it goes and I will keep you posted. But sapphic fantasy will probably stay. Let's be honest, it's probably gonna stay. Let me know if you're interested in seeing this with a different genre, like adult fantasy. I have a ton of adult fantasy that I have not gotten to. Um, I have a lot of adult contemporary. I have a lot of adult thriller. Would you be interested in seeing those series? Like maybe I do another reading vlog with those? What is happening in this reading vlog? Oh, this is not what I anticipated. I don't like this. I don't know if it's just the mood I'm in, if I just want like easier, fun reads, but like I flipped through this and this looks like unhaul number two, The Bone Witch and this. Like these are two of like the most highly rated books that are in this entire vlog. So I'm going to try Unhooked. Chapter four starts on page 28. So we're gonna read the first three chapters. I am so surprised. 
that the criers were is not going to work for me. But like, I, I honestly, I have to get over the fact that it's like a pretty edition and it's a special edition and it's a signed first edition. Like that doesn't mean anything if I'm not going to read and enjoy the book. I got to chapter three. I got to page 20. And I'm going to keep this one. Uh, do I love a Peter Pan retelling? Yes. Will I always love a Peter Pan retelling? Also yes. Do I enjoy uh, two girls that get uh, spirited away to a land of dangerous fae? Mm, yes, sure do. It's kind of ominous and interesting. It passes the vibe check. It already has like very spooky kind of like unknown qualities like a, a mom that's paranoid. We have to we have to keep moving. I have to keep you safe kind of a situation. I don't know why but I love that. I love that trope. Next up is Mary E. Pearson's Dance of Thieves and chapter three on this one starts on page 20. The ghosts are still here. The words lingered in the air. Each one a shimmering spirit cold whispers of caution but I wasn't afraid. I already knew. The ghosts they never go away. They call to you in unexpected moments, their hands lacing with yours and pulling you down paths that lead nowhere. This way, I learned to mostly shut them out. I'm gonna like this. I think I'm gonna like it. All right, friends, I am done the first 20 pages of Dance of Thieves. I'm gonna keep it. I know I like Mary's writing, so I'm not overly surprised, but this is a duology. I own both books, so I'm gonna go ahead and keep this one. It's a lot of backstory and a lot of like, you know, queen teenagers on a mission from a queen. A big war has, you know, ended. So they're sending children out to do, I don't know what right now, go over the rest of the books. Let's start with the first one that I read, which was Bone Crier's Moon. I'm still prone to keeping this. This one is about a girl who is supposed to sing men to their deaths and then you like the one that you sing to their death is the one that you're fated for as like a mate and you are able to stay with them for like a year to try to conceive and then you have to kill them. But they play this flute and it's like a siren song kind of a situation. I believe this kid, his dad was killed, he saw it. This girl calls to him and they're now linked but then her best friend goes looking for her I don't I believe is the deal and I'm I think I could be here for it I'm gonna keep that one next up was Mermaid Moon I don't like this book I have a lot of very pretty books now like a lot of them do I have room to display it and do I need a pretty book on my shelf if I'm never gonna read it I'm gonna get rid of it I'm gonna unhaul it okay then we read Serpent and Dove, still here for it, Witch, Witch Hunter, The Bone Witch by Rin Chepeko. I gave the first couple tries, couple chapters a try. Wasn't a fan. Girl brings her brother back from the dead. Consequences. Um, I wasn't a fan of the writing style. I don't think so. Also, that for sure is on like other library apps. So if I ever wanted to read it, I could still read it. Criers War. Again, I believe this is on different library apps. When I tell you the amount of names that were thrown out in the first two chapters, insane. I don't think it's going to be for me. And then Unhooked, I was on the fence about, I'm here for a retelling, I'm here for kids being kidnapped by Faye, etc. And I'm always here for a Peter Pan retelling. I did look on Hoopla and I did look on Overdrive and it's not on either. So I am going to keep it for that reason because I am still interested. Out of the seven books, I am keeping Dance of Thieves, Bone Criers, Moon, Serpent and Dove, and Unhooked. And then... In terms of unhauling it, uh, Criers War, Bone Witch, Mermaid Moon. Three go. Four stay. That is that. Let me know in a comment down below if you're interested in me doing this with other genres. I have, again, I don't think I'm going to read any of the four books that I'm keeping anytime soon, but at least I know now these are still things that I'm definitely interested in. And I know with a certainty that I would have kept these three books that I'm getting rid of on my shelves in the expectation that I was going to love them had I not read them and realized probably not for me. I think that wraps up this reading vlog. Let me know your thoughts down below. Have you read any of the books that I'm keeping? Have you read any of the books that I'm unhauling? Probably not have actually physically gotten rid of them by the time this goes up, so you can try to talk me back into it. I don't think it's gonna work, but you can try. If you liked it, give me a big thumbs up, click subscribe, and I will see all of you in the next video. Bye, friends. Oh, 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 oh,